it is not intuitive to define nutrient density as nutrients per calorie. Well, it makes sense to define nutrient density this way because it tells us about the quality of the calories we're consuming. Do we get good amounts of the 49 essential nutrients for the amount of energy this food is providing me? But what's not intuitive is the results. Like iceberg lettuce is technically more nutrient dense than sockeye salmon. But like it's as much as not, it's not a meaningful difference. It makes no sense that fennel would have the same nutrient density as whitefish. That strawberries have nearly double the nutrient density of blueberries. That watermelon has nearly tripled the nutrient density of apples. It's not intuitive. And it's not intuitive because diet culture has taught you to care about what? Four things. Calories, carb grams, fat grams, protein grams. Okay, maybe five or five things, I'd give you five. But there's 49 essential nutrients. And the most generous estimates are that maybe 6% of us are getting all of the essential nutrients our bodies need. That comes from a study that only looked at the estimated average requirement, which is only how much 50% of the population needs. And it only looked at 17 of the essential nutrients, not all 49. So, so the statistics are, are, are probably worse than that. And this is why learning to care about nutrient density is good because most of us don't need more calories. Most of us don't need more servings of foods. We need a way to fill those nutritional gaps without overconsuming food. And measurements of nutrient density, like the one I developed called the Nutrivor score, which is a very robust way to measure nutrient density because 33 nutrients go into the calculation, is how we identify those foods that contribute more nutrients than calories to our overall diets. No, you don't wanna just use nutrient density as your only metric for choosing food. Even a really comprehensive measurement of nutrient density like the Nutrivor score can't tell us some really vital information that should be informing our food choices. Like what nutrients are in this food and how this food fits into my specific diet. Like a, a nutrient puzzle piece with all of the other foods I ate today. That's why it's helpful to also understand what types of nutrients are in what types of foods and why I have developed other tools for crafting nutrient dense and balanced meals to make sure we're getting the full range of nutrients our bodies need. Like the Nutrivor meal map, which is in my book, or you can get a free download of it when you sign up for my free weekly newsletter, Nutrivor.com slash join. And I've done videos on it before, but let me know if you need a refresher. So yes, there's lots of results when you calculate nutrient density that don't align with what diet culture has taught us about certain foods. So it feels counterintuitive, but to me, that's the cool stuff. That's the part where we're actually learning really helpful information so that we can achieve that neutral goal of getting all of the nutrients our bodies need from the foods we eat.